That's the uh, the Times Square ball again. Things are really hotting up in uh, in New York. They're expecting the, they probably already have, the biggest uh, New Year's Eve crowd ever. About a million and a half New Yorkers, would you believe, rushed into Times Square, anticipating the, the drop of the new Times Square ball, which is, I think, I think Waterford Crystal, would you believe? So I hope they've got the thing well hinged. And you probably saw from the super there, the Easter Islands, probably probably going to be one of the last places on earth to celebrate the new year. Poor things are still in 1999. But they're getting into the spirit of it already. And there's fire again, not fireworks, but still fire. Water, fire and music. Without it, I don't know what this entire millennium celebration would have been like. Pretty dull, I suspect.
magic or mystery tour continues, I mean, it's amazing if you think about the cultural diversity and the rapid cultural changes. We're all suffering culture shock, I think. We're in Lima in Peru, having been in the Easter Islands immediately before that, and New York Times Square before that. This is the countdown in, in Lima. A spectacular they're going to have there. A, uh, a spectacular featuring their pre-Hispanic temple of uh, Pachacamac, if, uh, if the pronunciation's correct, near Lima. Music, dancing, and pre-Columbian rituals by torchlight, which we're looking at right now, I'd say. And like in so many other countries, the celebration in, in Lima, Peru, has the full backing of the government. Governments getting uh, together with private enterprise all over the world has been a large feature of this, I imagine. Privately owned television stations and government run uh, operations are also part of the consortium of 68 countries that we're part of. Miami Beach and the Gypsy Kings, the favourite of many around the world, and we're told they're going to give us an updated version of Bob Marley again, Bob Marley's famous One Love. They may be joined by Deborah Harry of Blondie. Yeah. Times Square in New York with 40 seconds to go there. At 11.50 local time, about 4.50 Greenwich Mean Time and about 15.50 Eastern Standard Time in Australia. The ball is going to make its maiden voyage and a 77-foot flagpole. A big crystal apple, somebody's just blurted in my ear. A big crystal apple. What a mess if it doesn't work. Times Square and the Americans, surprise, surprise, are expecting a spectacular celebration. There it goes. That's uh, the year 2000 reaching New York City, and I guess if you believe the Americans, it wasn't really the year 2000 anywhere until it was 2000 in New York City. And as we might expect, ticker tape. A ticker tape welcome for the 21st century. So now it's efficient. You can breathe easy. It really is seriously the year 2000 now because New York has said so with ticker tape. The only way to officially endorse something, I imagine. But look at that. Times Square, about a million and a half people, they say. A few sore heads there tomorrow. A few sore heads of... A few, a few sore heads all over the world, and as somebody's reminding me, the Y2K bug not striking even there, and there's probably more computers in that town than anywhere in the world per square metre. No problems that we can hear about, which is fantastic. Unless they're causing all the smoke, yes. Let's hope where the smoke does not fire on this occasion.
This is a replay, I think, of the uh, midnight in Washington. There's the Washington Monument itself, just down the road from, uh, from the White House. If you look carefully, you might see Bill and Hillary, and you might not. And now we're back to Canada again. I think this is a three-city celebration, this one. Toronto, Montreal and Ottawa. And only the Canadian freaks out there, of which I am not one, could tell us which of the three cities that is. But major fireworks displays. Surprise, surprise. Somebody said to me earlier, I wonder how much money was expended throughout the globe over the past 18 to 24 hours on fireworks. Literally, dough up in smoke. Must have been scrillions. Everybody has been doing fireworks, including the Canadians. Fireworks and music. A lot of new music written too, by the way. I still think the Sydney Harbour fireworks display can, uh, if fireworks displays can hold up their heads, can hold it up, I think, as good as anything we've seen. And that's not a display of bellicose nationalism, I think it's fact. South America in Peru, Easter Islands before that in Chile. I can't often think of the Easter Islands being in any other country. We think of them as an entity in themselves. But this is Peru. Unmistakable flutes. As you can see, Midnight in Miami. There can be a million album titles like that. Midnight in Miami, Midnight in Moscow, Midnight in Manhattan. Books, I suspect, CDs, you name it. The longest midnight. I was just saying it's been midnight for us here in the studio from the time that we got our first midnight. It's been a strange time warp situation, sitting where we are in this uh, television globule in the middle of nowhere, time-wise. It's been midnight. It's the longest midnight in history. Midnight, midnight, midnight.
to Times Square, and that's that's going to be a party. It'll be a long time before they'll use that title line about the party being over in New York, I suspect. Llega así esta manera
This is Toronto, by the way, which uh, looks very familiar to those of us who have been here for a while. But they're still celebrating madly in Canada. with us on 2000 Today, live around the world. We've just been spending the last few moments uh, on the east coast of North America, in uh, Miami, in New York, and in Canada. I'm out here shortly, and uh, joining me now to take over the, the next stint, Peter Thompson. Good to see you again, Peter. George. An old hand at this point. Yes, can I say Happy New Year again? Happy New Year to you, And too. Millennium. And Millennium. And Cathy Boland, who's joined us from Melbourne. Well, I'll say Happy New Year for the first time, George. Yeah, it is, it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah. How, how are the Melburnians living it? Oh, loving it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, I was at a private celebration last night rather than the You're looking back. okay despite that. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, knowing I had to work, I kept myself tidy, but um, yeah. uh, the weather was great uh, despite the threat of rain, That's so good. that was terrific, and uh, fireworks went off a tree. Melbourne loved it. Yes, no, it's been a successful round, I think. I, don't think any, I haven't heard a, a negative comment, not so much about our broadcast, but about the celebrations generally. Mm. Canberra That's was right. like the Northern Hemisphere, wasn't it? Just bitterly cold. That's, it was. It was, in fact. In Canada, we heard later, after we'd seen Canada, that was the, the, the wonderful stuff from that, uh, that, that pop diva. It was 15 de degrees below, Whoa. which is, probably explains why they were so rugged up. It wasn't for effect. Um, we're going to have a look at some highlights, and then I'm going to get out of here, but I'll be back later. Uh, some highlights of uh, last night at the Opera House, the fireworks, or in that harbour, and this morning's Opera House performance. So thanks, Peter. Thanks, Cathy. Thanks, and let's Jim. have a look at these highlights, and I'll see you later.